What's up, Online Empire Academy? I'm Joshua Woodward. Super excited to be here with you guys. I am here with Nick Santora. He is the CEO of Curricula. How are you doing, man? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So in the Online Empire Academy, we want to make sure that you guys are diversifying yourself and, and that you're covering all your bases. And so we wanted to bring Nick on to kind of talk about what his service is and, and what he does. So Nick, share your background and what you do. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of a blip here on the internet. Uh, can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah, I can hear okay, you. Cool. So, uh, so I, can you repeat that last question? It kind of cut out. <laughs> no problem. Um, I was just wondering what, like, I wanted to share with the, the Empire what you guys do and and just kind of your backstory along with that. Sure. So what we do is Curricula is a cybersecurity awareness training company. So basically we teach complex cybersecurity topics to people that relatively don't care about or don't realize how important cybersecurity is. So uh, we kind of break it down and make it interesting, easy to learn. Um, we deliver that in a software as a service type model. So that's kind of what we do. My background traditionally came from uh, engineering and security side. So I'm pretty heavy on the cybersecurity side. I used to do audits and infrastructure advisory and all kinds of technical stuff, but um, kind of always had that business background in myself. So my, my uh, uh, education was undergrad was computer information systems, but I also have an MBA. So um, with that, we kind of combined the skill set of taking the technical knowledge, but also being able to explain it to people so they actually get it. So that's, that's kind of my background. Very cool. So, I mean, it sounds like a lot of, a lot of what you're doing is, is teaching and, and, you know, you're teaching people how to do it, but how do they get involved with you guys? How do they even find you? So uh, we've done quite a bit of work with at least our SEO side of the fence. So um, uh, right now, a relatively new company, we're about six, seven months old right now, but um, if you search our name, we're already starting to come up on page one. But uh, if you search some of our targeted keywords, we're also right off the first page, which uh, was a significant push to do. And I, I think uh, convinced some of our partners of how valuable it is to be you know, on that page one. And that's where all the traffic is. And you look at what people are searching for, you want to be there. So um, we're almost there considering we, we just launched. So that's one way to find us. Another way is uh, we keep pretty active on our blog. So we talk about cybersecurity issues and we guest post on other blogs. And um, so that's another way to kind of keep in touch with us. And then we also travel around to trade shows and all kinds of stuff that has to do with security. So we are a pretty busy group. Very cool. And, and give, us, give us the name again and, and the site that we can find you at. Sure, you can go to www.getcurricula.com. And that's where we have kind of all of our stuff set up and you can learn a little bit more about us. Very cool. And, and for those, the, the people out there, like most of our people are, are selling on Amazon, um, you know, selling on eBay, they're, you know, they, they may not have their own sites, but for the people who do have their own sites, what are some ways that they can start now protecting themselves and, and, and building some sort of system of cybersecurity? So, uh, yeah, if you have your own site, there's a few things you can do is one, you kind of want to look at whatever you're selling, whether you have an inventory process or it's an online only, is you got to lock down what your processes and procedures are. And it blows my mind how many times people just kind of fall into doing business as is, you know, and you start to do a process, but you don't really understand why you're doing that process. Just that, hey, we've been doing this for a while. It's been running. And, you know, then, you, you know, the reason we say that is that what if something were to happen to that process or what if something were to happen to you, then... <laughs> Who's going to take over that process? How are they going to understand how to take it over? And uh, it really kind of opens your eyes as a business owner about uh, how important your infrastructure is and how your site runs. So that's kind of the easy win to, to start. Absolutely. Now, do you have to be like for me, I'm not techie at all. Like, you know, I, I my biggest tech part in all of this is I run this, the, the podcast. But besides that, I'm, you know, I'm not, I, I don't understand how all of that works. Do I have to have a a large understanding of how a computer or how a website works in order to like go to your site and start my cyber awareness? <laughs> uh, no, so, so uh, at least for what we do, our goal is to teach people at a point where um, you can go to your family at the dinner table and talk about what you just learned about. 
So we know that there's people out there, you know, I love cybersecurity and there's a few others that do, but <laughs> most people don't really love it. You know, they, it's kind of part of doing what they do every day, but they don't realize that what they do every day is really risky. And what we try to do is break those concepts down to say, hey, do you realize if you were to do this, this is what would happen? And then we kind of walk you through a story of scenario based and um, we have a bunch of characters in there and narrations and music and all that stuff that kind of brings it all to life to truly make you understand what the risks are and how you can kind of protect yourself in the future. That's very cool. Well, what, what is, so for, for us, our, our company, one of the things we do is, is called Triple Thread and it's a, it's a clothing company. We have our own website and stuff. What is, what's the first thing that I should be doing in protecting that website? Okay, so uh, first thing, is it a WordPress site? By any chance? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so I know that uh, much. <laughs> right. So, so WordPress is running a lot of the internet now. I don't even know what the number's up to, but there are a ton of uh, the community's really big. Uh, there's a ton of plugins to do security stuff, but if you, you got to think like the attacker on the other side of the fence, there's a lot of people looking at some default WordPress configurations. So, for example, when you go to the WP admin, which most people don't change. Um, you have some pretty basic configuration setup that you can do there that's, uh, you know, can be taken care of from a lot of security plugins. So highly recommend to just research WordPress security plugins on Google and install some of those, you know, plan on the install and make sure you do it correctly. But that'll, that'll uh, you know, put you at least a, a little bit of a safer bed than, than where you are right now. That's, that's good to know. Um, you you said some of those plugins. Are you guys one of those plugins, and and will you be if not? No, we're not. A, for this business, we don't um, do WordPress uh, security or technical security. We basically teach people about uh, some of the high level topics. So one one good example is phishing. So everyone knows that phishing is bad. Uh, when you get an email from Nigeria to say you won you know a million bucks, that you're not <laughs> supposed to click on that. And we we all know this, but. Um, if you look at one of the latest of Verizon data breach report, which comes out every year and it talks about threats and risks and vulnerabilities out in, in the world, well, one of the stats that came out of that report is one in four people still click and engage on phishing emails today, huh. which is alarmingly high when we all know it's bad, it's the wrong thing to do. But why are we doing that still? So kind of what we do is say, well, the reason people are still clicking on that is because they're not truly aware of why they should not be clicking on some of this mm. stuff. So imagine that you get an email from, uh, we get them all the time. We'll get one from hosting providers and some of our partners that are directly targeting us for phishing attempts. And you got to realize for yourself, anytime you're about to click a link or engage in any type of activity through email, take two seconds to just stop and think. Would my hosting provider actually ask for this? Or uh, would my partner actually be asking me this via email and requiring me to do some action to follow up? Most of the time, no. You know, there's slight, sometimes there are a chance where you do have that kind of follow up, but just that's all we ask is that you take two seconds to just stop. And the reason that people don't do that is because security and awareness of security is not part of our everyday lives yet. It's, yeah. uh, you know, all the time we hear about uh, you know, eat healthy and go uh, invest for your future and save for retirement and do all these other things. And that's awareness. That is just, it's constantly in your head to do these. But when it comes to security and doing some of these basic, easy to follow practices, blown out of the water because you'll either get training one time a year. It, usually if you work for a corporation, it's done in December with all your HR paperwork and stuff, um, or they don't do it at all. So if you're not made aware of what's right and wrong continuously, then these patterns, these behaviors are gonna to continue to happen in the wrong direction. So that's what we're there to change is teach people on very laser targeted topics of phishing and what uh, secure email is and what uh, DNS and all these topics that don't really get talked about that much and people don't understand, but we break them down, make them easy to understand for people and why they're risky. Oh, I love it. That's something, I mean, it, it, just just even what you're talking about, I mean, I know if it's like, if it's somebody random, I'm never going to click on it. Or if it's like, hey, you know, buy this now. It's like, and it's not from Best Buy or Target. Like, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm probably not, not going to click on it. So it's, I mean, it's, that's something practical that, that I'm now going to use and, and going to take home. What, you know, with, with the phishing, what are some of the things that you can look at, at, 
a, an email and automatically know that this is something I shouldn't click? Like you're saying, take two seconds. What are some telltale signs that I'm like, well, oh, bad email, I'm not gonna touch it? So first thing, no matter what, is just look at who sent it. So it's not gonna be a telltale sign of whether it's phishing or not, but click the little drop down on who sent it. If it comes from any wacky domain or anything from Gmail or you know, basically a, a uneducated fisher that's basically doing an easy campaign, uh, that's mm -hmm. the first way, just block that out. So instantaneously you can look there. Second, if you look at the subject line, um, a lot of the times when they're targeted to your email address in the subject line or your name in the subject line mm -hmm. and it's coming from someone, then just delete it. There's really no point in, in following up with that. If it's something important, they will call you. You know, it's, it's, uh, or if it's something that you're not gonna have an issue with not answering that email to engage with it, then don't click it. Uh, third is when you get to the actual content body of the email, uh, just take a second to skim through. Most of the time there's, you know, tons of spelling errors, stuff like that, where it's pieced together. You can see different fonts that are kind of collected from different sources pieced together because most of the time these guys don't speak English that well or um, from another country. So just scan that. And, uh, and the, the fourth part is that if they're asking or requiring you to do any action via that email, just don't do it. You know, huh. if you really feel uncomfortable about, hey, you know what, I, uh, I don't know, maybe my Bluehost account or GoDaddy account, maybe I do need to log in to check the file size of a certain, you know, platform then, all right, well, would they be sending me an email and requiring me to log in to do that? Or is that something I can do personally from the panel itself? Mm -hmm. So go to the website directly and log in and see if you see any alerts somewhere or call them, you know, do whatever you need to do, but do not click the links in those emails and do not, uh, <laughs> Uh, especially even if you did click a link, do not enter your credentials in at any point because then they got you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. And, and so what, what are, what are, so, okay, I click in, I give credentials. What then are the risks on my end? What, what could potentially be lost or, you know, what are, what is the need for this? So uh, two things. One is these guys act pretty fast when you do that. So they're monitoring when a campaign goes out you click a link, they got your email address. So mm -hmm. right away, that email address has been sold off to probably a hundred different companies on the on the you know the black market of the internet. So now you're gonna have to deal with a lot more spam issues than you even thought of. Um, <laughs> second, when you put in your credentials after that fact, a bunch of things happen. So if you got your GoDaddy or Bluehost or wherever you're hosting your site, that is right away is what they're gonna go for. Then they're gonna look at, hey, you know what? they use this username or the email or whatever it is, but they have the password that we also got. So let's try that password with all the other services mm. that potentially they have. So they'll go look at your email accounts, your uh, you know, bank accounts, your uh, you know, MailChimp or whatever other service you're using, you know, all yeah. across the board. They're gonna hit it, Facebook, social media. So now you got a whole pipeline of passwords <laughs> you gotta change and it just turns into a mess. So, that's why even if you click the link, yeah, you're gonna have a bunch of spam coming in, but in reality, it's not as damaging as putting in information to them. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 so good. <laughs> Again, a great concept to think through. Okay, so my account gets hacked. I'm, you know, they now have my my passwords and stuff. What is what's the number one thing that I should be doing right after I found out? Oh man, I, you know, somebody has my email. What what then should I be doing? It's uh, right away, you gotta, so what we always recommend is you gotta go change your passwords across every platform possible. Um, the way I recommend doing passwords is there's kind of, there's a bunch of different ways, but one way to do it is uh, don't pipe your passwords across every single uh, different platform of all different security levels. So for example, don't use the same password for your bank account that you use for your Twitter account because the banks <laughs> have it a little bit more secured, but your Twitter, if they're using the same password, that scenario I just gave, they're gonna go right to all the, the major banks trying to get into your account. So if you have different types of passwords for those, if one is compromised, it doesn't mm -hmm. affect all the others. So okay. you wanna have different stages, different levels, and then know what those stages are and then kind of change that stage of passwords. So that's okay. probably the, the biggest recommendation. Second is doing secure password design. So when you talk about, well, uh, you know, you always get those questions of, uh, you know, what's your dog's name? And what's, you know, all these yeah. common questions, which are kind of silly to ask, you know, in general. 
Uh, think of something fake for that answer. Don't wow. actually answer that correctly because what's your dog name? Well, most of the time you have a big picture with your dog on Facebook and then you do a search totally. and you find, oh, well, here's my dog's, you know, uh, you know, puppy head or whatever his, you know, his name is. And he goes, oh yeah, puppy head, here it is. It's like, all right, let me try puppy head. And then the last, uh, your birth date, the last numbers, which are usually the easiest ones to find. And then mm -hmm. now they got it so just because you, you're giving out a lot of public info. So the way we talk about doing password design is think of past phrases. So uh, for example, what's your uh, favorite movie? If off the top of your head. Uh, Big Fish. Okay, so favorite movie is Big Fish. So you say, I love Big Fish, right? So you use the first letter out of every word for that to create the password. So I, L, B, F, and then huh. make like maybe the B and the F capital. So, you know, because that's the title of the movie. And then you maybe repeat that a couple times in the password. So now you got something that's impossible to guess, but it actually means a lot to you. So it's really cool, unique ways of protecting your passwords that um, will prevent it from an easy kind of password guy who's going after trying to get into all your social and bank accounts. That's genius. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, it's like so simple cool. little wins that, that uh, really, and, you know, these, this isn't hard stuff. It's just a different way of thinking about it. Yeah. And and this is all stuff that you guys teach in, in your curriculum, correct? Yeah. So the way that we do curricula, the, the product that we're launching is the first campaign goes out this January. And what it what it does is that you'll get a very, it's almost think of it like a TV episode or a magazine subscription. And every quarter you get a new uh, episode on a specific topic. So the first episode we're doing is actually on fishing. So in January, huh. you're going to get a whole campaign that talks about fishing and all those kinds of things that we just talked about, but a lot more. But the way, instead of just me talking about it, we actually have um, one of our characters is a, a little girl named Dee Dee, and she is basically the atypical uh, hacker. So she, her goal is that I'm gonna go hack into a bunch of different companies. Um, she's in a little boat trying to fish for passwords and stuff, so it's pretty cool. But as you go through the experience, you kind of scroll through, and then it's got little videos that talk about you know, maybe she gets upset because someone dropped her ice cream cone. So she decides to hack the ice cream company. And it goes to the story of, well, why, you know, although the intention was kind of silly that she was hacking it because she, someone dropped her ice cream cone, this is a reality. This is what people act like out, out in the wild, wild west. And you can't really think of their intentions on why sometimes people do what they do. But regardless, people do that. So they'll hack something for no reason. So they might target you just because they didn't like a picture on your website. And then they go after you. So anyway, it goes through this episode of not only uh, the intentions, but it says, okay, well, now someone gives out a password. Well, now what does DD do with that password? And kind of all those things that we just talked about is huh. uh, what they can actually go through. It's something that no one really ever describes in detail when they do security training. They always talk about, uh, you know, teaching about, well, don't put in your password because it's bad. But if you don't tell people why it's bad, then they're not going to truly get it and connect with it. So that's kind of what we do in this campaign. So it's pretty cool. And then, and then on the admin side, so that's a, a, the user experience. But if you're an organization or a, a larger company, uh, you actually have an admin panel where you can view analytics based off that campaign. So you can see everything from how long your users are engaged, actually uh, learning about the campaigns. You can see how much of the videos they watch. You can see what they interacted with. So Really cool, makes it a nice little dashboard for you, easy to understand, and um, just kind of makes it really turnkey, easy, simple uh, to set up, and and uh, yeah, that, that's what, that's kind of the high level of what it is. Very cool. So, uh, tell us again, where where can we where can we find your product? So you can find us at getcurricula.com, and uh, just click on the top. There's a little link for Aware, and that's the name of uh, Curricula Aware is the name of the product that we're launching. Very good, very good. Well, thank you so much for being on, Nick. I, I seriously, I, that, those are good things. I'm, cool. I, I would, I felt encouraged because I'm already kind of branching off and doing some of the, the cybersecurity stuff in the sense of making sure my passwords are different, yeah. um, and and protecting myself there. And I have new ideas and and new ways to do that. So thank you for sharing with us. Uh, thank you for being on. And again, that was uh, mycurricula.com, correct? Getcurricula.com. Get. Get curricula, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Do you have any ending words of wisdom for the community? 
Uh, the only thing is stay, uh, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So uh, every October this happens and just stay aware with anything going on in cybersecurity. You can follow us on Twitter at, at curricula is our Twitter handle. And uh, using the hashtag, hashtag cyber aware is kind of what the community is, is engaging with. So uh, stay in tuned and just, if you have any questions, you can check us out on our site or, um, or hit us up on Twitter. Very good. Well, thank you again for being on. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Until next time, Empire, have a good day.